Okay, on this one we're going to talk about voltage drop and series loads. Now you can see what I've got right here. I've got two light bulbs set up. And you'll notice we're 121.3 or 4. Okay. But notice I put these two light bulbs in series. Now normally we don't put anything in series in electrical. I mean there are cases where you do but it's pretty uncommon. What I wanted to do is show you what voltage drop really is. And this is probably a pretty good way to do it. Now before I've shown you this where we have 120 volts there. If you look at the way the meter is wired in, it's wired on each side of the line. It's not in series. If it was in series, I'd actually have to cut one of these lines and put the meter across that. Uh, and you saw that effectively last time when I burned out the light bulb. When I unscrewed the light bulb, I got my 120 crosshair because this connection was broken. But in this case, the meter is allowing a parallel flow through the meter itself. There's power is coming from here, going into the meter, through the meter, and coming back to here. Even though no power is going through the circuit, I actually have a circuit with my meter. And uh, the meter is actually acting like a little load at this point. It's not really a load. It's not near enough. But uh, I'm going to put this in parallel. Now I did this before when I put it on the switch. It was in parallel to the switch, so the power went through the meter. Okay, you can see I have the the meter leads across there, I'm reading my 121.4 like I did last time. Uh, because the meter is providing a parallel flow to this switch. Now I got continuity through all around here and back to there and up to there. So I can put the meter in here and it acts like a little parallel load so it'll read me voltage. Now if I do something like this Okay, I lost it because I opened this circuit. Now, uh, when I hook this meter up, I actually am bypassing this switch because I have created a bypass with the meter. I don't know if it's going to make sense to you or not, but the meter is actually creating a circuit through there. Now I broke the circuit when I unscrewed this. Now you notice neither of the light bulbs are on because this meter makes such a tiny, tiny load that it cannot energize these. Power is actually going through these to feed the meter. But it's a tiny, tiny little bit of power. Now we're going to go ahead and turn this on and of course when we turn this on first thing that happens is the meter is reading the voltage drop across the switch which it can't hardly read it and now look at our light bulbs have come on now this is a little bit of a goofball here isn't it Now I've shut off one of my lights here. Let's see. Oh, okay, that's just so you can see. This light bulb is glowing it's kind of bright. This light bulb is just kind of yellow. You can hardly even see if it's on. But you can see it is, is actually on there. Okay. Why did this happen? These two light bulbs, this one's a 25 watt, this one is a 40 watt. 
the small bulb is not allowing very much power through. Not enough to operate this. Plus our voltage, neither one of these lights are very bright. Let me turn my lights back up and you'll kind of see, again, they're not very bright. Okay. Now, I'm going to put the meter across these lights and we'll go through this series load. Okay, note I've got one probe here, which is next to the uh, power coming in. And I got one probe here, which is downstream of the switch. So I'm in either side of the line. I am actually in parallel with these two loads. And I'm reading 121.3 or 4 volts. I, it's, that's normal because I have 121 volts drop across these, this circuit. Okay, now let's take and hook up across one of the lights. Okay. Now we're showing 88.1. Hmm. I lost my 121, didn't I? The reason I lost my 121 is because I'm only going across one of these lights. I remember that 88. Now I'm going to take and take this off here and I'm going to put it down here. So I'm just reading the voltage drop of one light. Now what do we got? 32, 33 volts. Okay, if I take my 33 and my 88 and I add them together, guess what I get? 121. So. All the math seems to work out. Now you can see why we don't put lights in series or any loads in series generally on uh, AC circuits. Now if I was, one other thing's going to happen here because that's a series circuit. If one bulb fails, they both fail. And guess what I got? 121. That's because I'm reading completely, that's cool, uh, I'm reading a complete circuit because I got a circuit that's good all the way through except here. And remember when I did this before, if I read 121 volts across the load and the load wasn't working, then my load had failed. Well, in this case it has. Now if I hook it back up again, comes back on, I go back to my 33. I uh, hope this makes sense. Uh, may generate more questions than anything else, but uh, that's a series load and that's voltage drop across a series load uh, and of course uh, across any load and most loads are going to be in parallel. Uh, voltage drop across 120 volt load is going to be 120 volts. Hope this helps uh, and we'll continue on when I get around to doing another one.